What good is a very small CPU cooler? John's Bose HX6200D claims to be able to get a 200 watt TTP under control. Is that true? And where would you even want to use such a tiny dwarf of an air cooler anyway? Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm taking a look at the Johnspo HX6200D in white. The same cooler can however also be picked up in classic black, but doesn't come with an ARGB lit fan. Obviously we're talking of a top low or top down cooler here, as seen with traditional stock coolers in the past and still to this day actually by Intel and AMD. Meaning that air doesn't move sideways through the fins, but instead comes top down from the top. In terms of pricing, the HX6200D can be had for about 45 to 50 US dollars, which admittedly isn't exactly low. But we do have to understand that this probably is a bit of a more niche product that isn't produced in masses. Therefore, pricing goes up for all involved, both the manufacturer as well as the consumer. But what matters most for us at the end of the day is what kind of cooling performance and noise level this cooler brings to the table and of course where you'd be using such a cooler. Besides the CPU cooler itself that comes already pre-assembled with its fan, there's still the user manual along with all the stuff needed for the installation. This also includes a little bit of thermal paste by Thermal Grizzly for that matter. Even though the white version of the HX6200D comes equipped with a fan sporting ARGB lighting, Johnspo refrained from including just a simple ARGB controller for us to make use of. Well, not that big of a deal I guess. The lighting connects via the standard 5 volt 3 pin connector and daisy chaining is made easy for us thanks to that additional mail connector. From a sheer aesthetic perspective, I find this air cooler fairly interesting and like what they've done with it, albeit there isn't a whole lot one can do design wise anyway. The build quality impresses, everything seems to be of good quality, no matter if we are talking about the heatsink or fan. By the way, this happens to be a 120mm large fan and that's the main dimension the rest of the cooler sticks with to allow for maximum compactness. Our usual regular fans we're accustomed to mostly are 25mm thick. Today's fan by Johnspo comes in at a mere 15mm. And that is important as the total height of the cooler needs to be as low as possible. We are talking of just 63mm. Additionally, specific sections of the cooler were left out in order to not cause any clearance issues, mainly with mini ITX motherboards, so the cooler doesn't interfere with the memory, motherboard or M.2 SSD heatsinks. Now while for the temperature test I put the HX6200D onto a common ATX board, I can actually speak of experience of an ITX build. Not too long ago I reviewed John's Bow's A4 small form factor case and did make use of today's HX6200D for that build. I didn't run into any clearance issues with it. As said before, all is nicely calculated and that is reassuring. So it should be obvious that the main use case for this most of the time should be in systems of a very small form factor, ITX basically. Johnspo is offering us a nickel plated copper base and on top of that this dwarf even packs a total of 6 heat pipes. According to the manufacturer's claims all the recent Intel and AMD sockets are being supported. Even LJ1700 made it onto the support list whereas for AMD AM4 still appears to be the most recent socket supported. However, if AMD's claims can be blindly trusted, AM4 coolers should retain compatibility with even the upcoming AM5 socket. And so we are finally getting to the test results. As always, my toasty AMD Ryzen 7 3800X comes into play for that. The following are my test results. Well, what can there really be said about the cooling performance? It does a pretty good job keeping up, but of course 
can't seriously compete against its bigger, chunkier colleagues that simply bring more cooling surface to the table. Still, it's nothing short of amazing how much oomph this small and especially slim fan is capable of delivering. It does a fine job and that can be felt when holding one's hand close to it. Nonetheless, I sadly have to point out that I hardly have anything comparable within my charts. There's no real comparison going on and that's a shame. It should be obvious that you aren't meant to compare ITX coolers with regular ones. But anyway, the HX6200D doesn't do a terrible job given that fact when taking a nice close look at the achieved temperatures. This battle dwarf lands at last place, but then again, it's a dwarf. It does, however, only fall short of about 1 to 2 degrees Celsius to the slightly bigger air coolers by Enermax, Xylens, and Be Quiet, for instance. That's a very respectable result and goes to show that Jansbo knows what they're doing in the world of CPU cooling. Even when it comes to noise levels, the HX6200D does well. If you decide to let the fan spin at its max rated 1800 RPM, it's definitely audible. Once you go ahead and just lower the fan speed slightly, we are heading into territory of an almost inaudible experience. A matter of fact that I believe is very important for ITX builds. So you sure have to make sure to find the right use case for this HX6200D. It certainly would not be wise to grab this one over a regular air cooler for a standard ATX build. It's not meant to be a replacement. Alone the pricing of $45 to $50 stops us from doing that. Still I am very surprised about the cooling results and can surely recommend taking the Jansbo HX6200D into consideration for your ITX projects. With that said, thanks so much for watching and I hope you'll be back here next time as well.